Tiffany Bloom is going to read the weekly horoscope from astro.com. Week from the 13th to the 19th of December 2021. General tendencies, everyday life, profession. This is for the collective. The hands on the planetary clock have moved a little further. Mars has arrived in the sign of Sagittarius and Mercury in Capricorn. Your thinking, Mercury, becomes more realistic and responsible again. And with your actions, you strive boldly forward to new horizons. Mars in Sagittarius and the Sun in Sagittarius in connection with Jupiter. Venus comes to a standstill by Sunday and stays with Pluto. You are fascinated by something or someone and realize that you want to look at the thing or person more closely because it is complex, profound, and absolutely promising. Meanwhile, the tension between Saturn and Uranus is increasing. You are desperately seeking the solution to a problem that has marked this year. Does the solution lie with Saturn and Aquarius, which argues for new rules and technical ways, or with Uranus and Taurus, which focuses on natural methods and personal responsibility, or rather with Pluto and Capricorn, which reminds you of your primal instincts and regenerative power? It would be best if all had a say in the matter, and that is what you would like for society to. Indeed. Everyday life and love, well, Venus and Mars are now in signs that are foreign to each other. Previously, they had walked nicely in step. Perhaps previously we had walked nicely in step with our fellow humans. They had been largely in agreement for a few weeks. Venus stuck on Pluto bumps into power issues. Could it be that Harmony had previously been at the expense of a partner? Has someone been too demanding and left the other person too little room to make their own decisions? Venus will feel that and so will all the lovers. Despite all fascination, now. So we're gonna start with the Pisces because I like to do things backwards. All right, Pisces, you now have an opportunity to be very active socially or professionally following up on a previous activity. Mars in Sagittarius is now conjunct the descending lunar node. You are acting from your gut and with an eye to the future, to the best of your ability. The sun and Jupiter describe something similar, and this could be quite wonderful. If Venus did not stand still with Pluto, and if Mercury did not move into Capricorn, these other constellations could be a warning to you. Have you overlooked something important as described by Pluto? Or have you not yet understood and classified something correctly? What happens to old rules when new ones are made? Are the old ones then automatically no longer effective? And when it comes to knowledge and experience, can you simply dispense with experience? There is certainly a lot of data to be evaluated and actually you should wait for the result before making further plans. But before that is done, it is already the Gemini full moon on Saturday and everyone is acting as if the solution has already been found. In everyday life and love, Venus 
conjunct Pluto and Capricorn. This shows how courageous people are now when they get involved with someone. But maybe it's not courage at all, but pure fascination. You feel the power of love when you get caught by someone's gaze now, or when you can't get away from someone even though you have already believed you had. It will definitely be enlightening if you pursue fascination and endure this intensely. All right, Aquarius. Who are you? What do you identify with? How would you like to be? These are the questions Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius are asking you to define your place in society. What has changed in the past year? It does you good to look back and recognize the progress you have made and experienced. It's as if society is calling you and asking you what you have to contribute. But you also get others to contribute. And you also get offers to contribute. You are needed. Such requests do you good. You feel honored. The question arises whether you don't have much more to offer. If there are hidden abilities to be discovered, Venus can help as she remains with Pluto into January. Pluto describes a primal force that you may not yet have properly assessed or a talent that you have not yet become aware of. Your wishful thinking is helpful. What you dream of certainly has to do with your potential. You may take your dreams seriously, even if they are far from reality at the moment. In everyday life and love, Venus slows down and stops in Capricorn at the end of the week, at least as seen from Earth. She refuses to go into Aquarius because there is still something to sort out in Capricorn and especially with Pluto. This may mean that you are far from an unequal uh, relationship at the moment. And if this is so, you need to urgently investigate who is making most of the decisions and why no one is preventing it. Let me read that again. This may mean that you are far from an equal relationship at the moment. And if this is so, you need to urgently investigate who is making most of the decisions and why no one else has been preventing it. There you go, Aquarius. Capricorn everyday life and profession. Now when Mercury enters Capricorn, it strengthens your ability to self-reflect. This is just in time for you because you have already started to think about your personal issues. It may be about your place in this world. Where do you feel comfortable? Where do you feel safe? Where and how can you best develop yourself? This is also where Uranus in Taurus resonates, which has been tweaking your self-will for a few years now, presenting you with situations time and again where you could show new sides of yourself and amaze those around you. But sometimes you have also been amazed at yourself. Now is the time to relive these moments in which you were great and surpassed yourself. There are quite a few of them, and it is time that you appreciate them and thus yourself. The Sun-Jupiter connection indicates good humor coming from within, that is, from your own thoughts and feelings. You spread these in everyday life and get positive feedback, especially on the weekend at the Gemini full moon, which is conjunct my Venus, by the way, of course. Everyday life and love, the tension between Saturn and Uranus describes a process in which you repeatedly cross boundaries that you had actually set for yourself. It does you good to recognize your own part in these limitations. Nobody is slowing you down. You are doing it yourself again and again. 
And by taking responsibility for this, you take the pressure off the relationship and your partner. However, don't be too hard on yourself. You deserve the reason you're in it. See? Capricorn. Okay, that was Capricorn. Sagittarius. Mars reaches the sign of Sagittarius and is now much more accessible to you when you want to fight for something. You have new energy and drive. You can also see this in the Sun-Jupiter connection, which becomes exact at the full moon on Saturday. This describes openness to the world, joy, and future orientation. At the same time, Mercury now reaches Capricorn, where Venus and Pluto are still close together for three weeks. So, in addition to the new joyful view of the future, there is also a kind of realism that seems almost pessimistic. You have to accept this darker, more difficult side if you want to shape the future. If it's realism, you should let the facts speak for themselves. If it is pessimism, you should come to understand the reason. What are you worried about? Where do you have concerns? Where are you not free but must follow a higher power? Who or what has so much power? How could you come back into your own? And where do you already have it and just haven't realized it yet? Sagittarius, everyday life and love. <clears throat> you should now look at your own needs and not be distracted by your partner which would be very convenient. What do you need to be happy? How much security do you need? Yes, even a Sagittarius has security needs. There is a danger that you will want to play the hero for other people and lose touch with yourself. You are actually in relationship with yourself. It should be a good relationship. You need to nurture it. Scorpio. Mars leaves Scorpio and enters Sagittarius where, the, where it is initially at the descending lunar node. This means that you can now actually expand your previous scope of action, relying on methods that have proven successful in the past. The sun is also still in Sagittarius, aspecting Jupiter. This indicates that you need a sense of achievement Things must move forward. The Aries moon also presses the accelerator on Monday. In Taurus, the moon activates the saturn Uranus tension. This can be experienced as pressure to modernize. Something urgently needs to change. At the same time, Venus slows down and gets stuck with Pluto and Capricorn. This indicates counter pressure, especially since Mercury also moves into Capricorn on Monday. So, some planets want to step on the gas and desire change. Others are holding on to something with all their might. Perhaps it will help you if you learn to understand why people hold on to something so tightly. If there are fears indicated by Pluto, you must take them seriously and try to empathize. <clears throat> in everyday life and love, Scorpio. Partners can't get away from each other, although getting away or fear of being left is a constant topic. Do you talk about it or you, do you prefer to keep silent? Venus indicates that you feel that you have not yet understood everything, but that you want to understand it. This is a good starting point, but first you need to recognize how stuck you are in the relationship and get clear about your need for security. Okay. Libra. Libra, there are still two worlds that are strangers to each other. On the one hand, there are planets in the masculine elements of fire and air that like to move forward and welcome the new, like Libra. On the other hand, there are planets in the feminine signs of earth and water that like to preserve what already exists, such as Venus and Capricorn. 
Now Venus is with Pluto and turns retrograde there this weekend. Pluto can exaggerate the preserving so much that it eventually tips over into the opposite. In Capricorn, we try to have everything well under control. You need security, and this need can seem greatly exaggerated now. Venus indicates your desire to understand this. With Pluto, moreover, all available power is being used, something many of us have yet to come to terms with. Last but not least, with Pluto in Capricorn, fears are stirred up. Venus close to Pluto indicates that you will face these fears. Usually fears become smaller once you dare to look at them more closely. Mercury also enters Capricorn now, helping you to keep a clear view. The Gemini full moon in connection with Jupiter spreads a lot of hope this weekend. That's a good Libra. Here's everyday life and love. Venus conjunct Pluto describes a relationship situation that you can't seem to get out of. The question is whether you would even want to. The familiarity is so great that you are each other's home. However, in the process, the relationship loses the lightness and buoyancy that you love so much. This week, this is strongly compensated for. You demonstrate lightheartedness. If you overdo it, you will get your comeuppance after the full moon. <laughs> that is, after the weekend. <clears throat> okay, Virgo. Mars changes from stubborn Scorpio to optimistic Sagittarius. With this, work can be enjoyable, especially with the Sagittarius sun in connection with Jupiter, plus Sunday's full moon. You can do a lot of good in a pleasant way. It looks less pleasant with Mercury, Pluto, and Venus in Capricorn. These planets deal with such serious issues that it doesn't fit at all with the other constellations. So there is a juxtaposition of the particularly beautiful and the less beautiful. This is actually always the case, but this week it literally jumps out at you. Suddenly you get a bad feeling or even a bad conscience when you spread good news. And if that's not the case, someone comes along and calls your attention to the negative. It's about perceiving the whole picture and not getting stuck in your comfort zone. For you personally, it continues to be about self-esteem, which you sometimes undermine yourself. Your relationship issues in everyday life and love, Virgo, become more and more serious. You can philosophize about freedom but in the end, you are not really free at all. Where does that come from? Maybe you don't want to be free at all. It has to do with your need for security and the ability to plan. You like to have everything under control. Sometimes you get stuck in a situation because of this, even though it is not optimal. The point is to find out how good your relationship life Okay, Leo. Here we go, Leo. Everyday life and profession. The sun in the sign of Sagittarius, with the support of Jupiter, once again uses all its radiance to have a positive effect on the world. This is what you do, too. Of course, you're Leo. In addition, Mars now enters the sign of Sagittarius and takes over tasks that are part of your world improvement program. When something great is announced, someone always ends up having, having to do the work. There is a tendency now for you to get stuck with it. Or has there been this tendency before? It looks like deja vu. Venus sticks to Pluto and Capricorn and feels power structure. Who determines what? And why does it always follow the same pattern? You remain very positive on the surface this week and are very active, but subliminally, something begins to gnaw at you. There are moments when you become unusually quiet. Only good observers, who are probably your best and most loyal friends, will notice this. In everyday life and love, Leo, 
You are responsible for keeping your partner happy, are you? Or is it rather the other way around? In fact, both make an effort because both have an idealistic image of the relationship. The question arises whether, whether it is healthy in the long run. If you have to be happy all the time, the question arises whether it is healthy in the long run if you have to be happy all the time. You should think about that for a bit. You have time. But of course, you are very busy again this week because you want to have everything under control. Do you notice anything? Good question, Leo. All right, Cancer, everyday life and profession. Mercury reaches Capricorn, indicating an interlocutor, interlocutor who means business. It's a bit reminiscent of last Monday and Tuesday when the moon was in Capricorn. This means there are now three planets in Capricorn, opposite the sign of Cancer, as Venus and Pluto are also in Capricorn. You notice it in your encounters, which are always about the right thing or the order. <laughs> There's something obsessive about it, but it's not new. Mars moves into Sagittarius, indicating that you want to do a lot of good and be useful. You approach people with a new confidence and like it when there are lots of encounters. The moon on Monday indicates that you like to be active now. From Wednesday, it is more of a communal activity where the moon is in Taurus, where Uranus is, and then moon in Gemini. The Gemini full moon in connection with Jupiter is a moment of abundance or being fulfilled, a culmination in a process involving many people. Sunday. It is then time for you to return to your own needs and become fully yourself again. The planets in Capricorn lack lightning, while the Sagittarius Sun in connection with Jupiter is pretty easy going. How does this fit together? Who is in what role? Do you even need to divide it into roles or couldn't you just divide the energies fairly? Take a look at your relationship life. Who is in charge of what? Are there clearly defined roles? Who can take some of the load off of whom? And Gemini. Oh. Mars is no longer in, as radical and Sagittarius as he was in Scorpio, but he is eager to convince others. The sun, still in Sagittarius, and now in connection with Jupiter, is also in persuasion mode because it is passionate about a cause. This is about freedom as an important good. This weekend, the Gemini full moon forms showing how far you can get with persuasion. Mercury leaves Sagittarius and is in Capricorn, admittedly not as positive, open-minded, and philanthropic, but more realistic and modest. Perhaps this is a better way to persuade. Venus and Pluto, close together in Capricorn, seek the truth and have trouble remaining truly objective. If there has been an injury, it lingers. If you sweep it under the rug, you stumble over it now or soon. You won't get around dealing with the real issue. This has to do with power. Sometimes you don't realize when you are acting powerfully toward others. Everyone acts according to their nature. In everyday life and love, Gemini, there are currently a whole load of planets more or less opposite the sign of Gemini. With that, you have many encounters, some being very intense and challenging. How do you feel on Wednesday when the moon joins Uranus? Will you notice then that something is giving you no peace? And how about Thursday and Friday when the Gemini moon is opposite combative Mars? At the weekend, the issues come to the table. All right, Taurus. The tension between Uranus and Taurus and Saturn and Aquarius is getting higher. You experience it when you can no longer stand certain rules and you oppose them. You also experience it when someone has something to say because they are in a certain key position, while you feel that you actually know better. 
Maybe you only lack a diploma or another title. It's about power and powerlessness. A theme that has been on the agenda for a very long time. Are things getting worse? Or are you getting closer to a solution? What might the solution look like? How can you ensure that no one loses face when they have to give in? Is it conceivable that two sides could each take a step toward each other? As long as this is unthinkable, a problem will always spiral upwards. What could you personally do to help bring about peace? Do you still want it at all? Still? The planets indicate lack of understanding, but they also indicate goodwill. You can decide for one or the other. Everyday life and love, Taurus. Venus has now begun her long and intense rendezvous with Pluto. There is not a dry eye left in the house. You look for the truth and you will find it. Mars has moved from radical Scorpio into the fiery sign of Sagittarius, indicating a more constructive strategy for action. Mercury moves from Sagittarius into Capricorn and focuses on sober facts. This may help when traumas old traumas catch up with you. If you look at everything objectively, you can de-dramatize what you have experienced. And the Aries, last but not least. Last but usually first. So Mars changes into the sign of Sagittarius, the element fire, and now it's more in tune with Aries again. You've got new creative will and probably a corresponding <clears throat> new stimulating field of activity. Surely you will be able to learn a lot of new things, but you have to keep to certain rules. Every industry has its own technical language and its own laws. Right now you are enjoying the new opportunities for movement, but at the same time there is something you are stuck on, just as Venus is stuck on Pluto which has to do with power structures. Could it be about coming more into your own power or getting comfortable with the word power in the first place? When Mars was running through Scorpio, powerful action was on the agenda. Who has made most of the decisions lately? Were you involved? Were you able to have a say? Do you now have more opportunities for equal participation or is there is still work to do that you have not paid enough attention to so far. All right, Aries, everyday life and love. What about the work-life balance, Aries? Has anything changed and improved recently? How much time do you have for your personal interests? How much time is left for your partner? Is everything fairly distributed or do you have the impression that you have come up short? Sagittarius Mars indicates that you are enterprising. Capricorn Venus with Pluto indicates that there is something to sort out in relationships. The four. All right, so that is your weekly horoscope. I hope you enjoyed.